That time. Two right. Headed Vic, everybody. Out there. It's time for new news. But there's the Two Headed Vic. Bringing the new news sports. Get ready, get greasy, put the jack strap on, even if you ain't going nowhere. Just to wear it around the house. Press your friends, yeah. That's just sick. That's <laughs> Press sick. your friends, walk around your jock strap. That's sick. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, well, now that you did a wonderful job, let's get the sports underway since that was our lead dog in this intro of this show, man. Yay! There's a lot to talk about. Girls down. I know. We know they're ex- even the ladies excited about sports today. Yes, sir. That's right. And you know what? I don't think we're going to be pressing upon any new news when it comes to sports because, I mean, the Twitter f- thing was just going nuts with the responses to the Lakers and how they were playing. So it became obvious. We covered everything. We even did our prognostications. We did everything. What? <laughs> I know proud. I did not nostigate on them. (laughs) That's all right. But we did what we had to do. And part of this is to try to find, well, you know, everybody's using the story of Bynum, Kobe, Phil Jackson. And I said, you know something? You guys kind of forgot about Dallas to a certain degree. And I think the reason why people haven't forgot is the title up here. Was the Dallas Mavericks that good in sweep of the L.A. Lakers? Yes. But, yes, but they were. They were. They but. set a three-point record. I mean, come right. on. That's the hottest. True. True. But here's the question. Because if you're going to give Dallas this, the props, the props is, is that can they continue this? When you shoot 60.3% from the, from the floor, not including three points, and then your three-point percentage is at 62% higher, First of all, there's no other team slower than the Lakers that you're going to get away with doing that. That's just unbelievable to sit there and shoot higher percentage than three points than all your other shots, including layups under the basket. So for me, I can understand why the story still is Dallas looks somewhat favored. But you live and die by those outside shots. I don't see that continuing. So you're going to hate on them now because they scored. No, 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 no. No, no, no. What I'm saying is before we jump on that big bandwagon and, and start saying, hey, Dallas is the team. I still agree with one thing. They had wide open shots. They, they're passionate. They were on point. They knew how. Everybody said it. You saw the Lakers as their continued problem. They don't know how to handle the pick and roll. And when you have tall guys, I don't care how good they are, faster, shorter guys on the pick and roll is going to beat you all the time. So I just think you also have to take into account the fact that their defense, not just off, everybody loves to talk about the offense. Right. Their defense held the Lakers to less than 40 points in oh, the yeah. first half. Yeah, they did. 40 points and a half. Yeah. That's shooting at a game average right. of around 80 points. Right. That They basically shut them down. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with the de- defense. But the part that it got me was is that I think they were so busy being confused about how to play defense they left their offense off the floor. And when you get into the blame game, everybody's going to talk about it. They're going to say, Kobe's not the same. Of course he's not. Kobe played well. well and, and I know that. He can't Kobe carry played, the team. Kobe played very well. But not as good as expected for not him. Not as good. He has, you know, right. But still, he was the one on the team. And a team, you know, the people who really looked bad to me, who most disappointed, Lamar Odom is probably well, yeah, one of the top ones. Yeah. I was disappointed in his play. Yeah. I mean, he shot free throws right. looking so weak. I mean, I've never seen him throw up even a free throw attempt that looked so lackadaisical. Right. And some of the passes that he threw that were stolen. Right. Some of the most weak lackadaisical. Right. Just, I don't even know. <laughs> you know yeah. what? As a team, bad even. collapse. Just a global kind of collapse. Even right. my boy Derek Fisher played poorly. Right. But he continued to hustle. When, but still a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. The problem with the Derek Fisher thing is, look, we're in a point guard league this year, meaning that every point guard has what they call the dynamics of penetration, going to the hole, making you open up. If Berea, J.J. Berea goes like, I'm going scot-free. I'm going clear to the basket on layups. That's not a phenomenon. That's just lack of defense, period, on the team. And let's give it to Berea. A lot of those things, those shots are actually contested. He He has a wonderful knack of being the little man throwing up stuff under and around you. I mean, some of those shots that he threw up where people were over him in a position to block shots right. just had to do with the wondrous ways he's able to throw right. those little – I mean, because some of that stuff, Vic, he was letting go, you but know. But there was nobody even 
contesting. See, when they don't say, when they say contesting, they didn't mean right when he got to the basket. They said he's not even having a difficult time. When he got around the pick and roll, right. there was nobody in his face. But, I, but when he yeah. got to the center... There weren't many times he got to the, again. He, that's he, what I'm saying. The, he made those shots, a lot of those shots around people. If you look, if you look at what they were saying about the idea that you watched the other games, you watched Portland, you watched the other teams. He had he he didn't struggle. He didn't have it clear and free. There was always somebody there to say we're going to change your shot. With the Lakers, I think the part that got everybody is is one is Paul Gasol. Number one, he just this is the part of soft that I understand. Soft is not showing how physical you are it's a mentality i think andrew bynum was showing how strong he wanted to be he may have done the wrong play that's overblown to me and i'm gonna say overblown for a reason because lakers are known to be soft so the idea that they execute some kind of thing all of a sudden becomes oh it's way overblown i said well look at d wade at the boston celtics uh, uh on rondo and i said well you know it may not be as bad but like D-Way said, let's just, I'm moving on. I said, well, well, this one, they're carrying it over. I said, you're bleeding this story. And if you follow Twitter, you know, a lot about the Bynum thing. Yeah, the traditional media is going like, oh, this is bully. Job. Well, I mean, when I'm saying the Twitter uh, responses to Bynum wasn't as bad as the general media. The Bynum's bad play at the uh, end of yeah, the game you're yeah. talking about? That's what I'm saying. It wasn't as bad. That's what the whole Bynum story is, is that he cheap shot J.J. Barrett. I guess it depends on you where you have. He still was an obvious cheap shot. Yeah, I got it. But they're making it like it is so horrific. It's not that bad. I mean, I don't know if it's so horrific. Okay, to me, horrific. Those are kind of value judgments. It's, it was enough that you should be ejected from the game. Oh, I, I agree. Mean, I think that's that, absolutely. I, also I agree. Hope, but when you start, people have ads of like horrific. I mean, right. relative to what? Right. It still was a dirty, cheap shot. Yeah. And 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 just you know, just right. show and and plus, it just to me is like I hate to say it. We have a. That's a bitch move. I'm sorry. <laughs> I agree. Nobody's it's, saying it's, just, it's, it's not. It's just. It's just like. It's just. Weak on a bunch of levels. Yes, yeah, I, I agree. Nobody's even debating that. They're just saying if you look at the story, I said, uh, I'm sorry. I'm more put off by Odom and Gasol than I am Bynum. Oh, I'm right? not. So, I'm more. I'm more. I'm more put off by dirty cheap shots <laughs> than lazy ball players. <laughs> no, no, I think, no. I think that just depends on the person. Yeah, some I think people. It's... Some people are more willing to be like I said. Some people are more insulted by just them losing, right. than any of the dirty stuff. Uh, yeah, and I say I just think that's people. And I think the part that got him to that point point was I said, what happened? You wait till the end of the game. You wait for the last 30 seconds of the game. It's because the players on the Lakers wasn't doing their job. And so to me, the whole point is, is if you want to put it in a capsule at the last moment, I agree. He should be punished. He should be penalized. He should lose games. He should whatever. But in the end, I said, what got him to that point? The lack of play by the big man who's supposed to step up. It looked like they gave up. And when you, that's, that, I don't respect you why, at all when you give up. Right. That's why, that's why when you do a cheap shot on top of that, it's one thing when you do it and if you've been hustling and playing good defense, but when you've been playing the kind of lousy game you've had, then to do it on top of that, it makes that's it worse. what makes it look worse. Yeah. Especially for someone like Odom, you know, for Odom. Even yeah. more for Odom than I think for uh, – Buying them, even yeah. though, like again, these are pe- that's going to follow them. Yeah, and Odom apologized. Buying them story is he doesn't feel bad, so he has it. So it's going to haunt him. It's going to stay with him for a while. So he's making one of those immature decisions, and probably once sure, he comes because down, because in the old bad. days you're supposed all he had to do was act like he was going for the ball. You still right. hit him hard, right? But you just go for the ball. That's right. all. But now let me congratulate the Mavs. Because I have to turn around and say, once they were clicking, it became like a virus. They were all over it. Which now says there's a legacy that now Phil Jackson has to turn around and say, you know, was my legacy tarnished? I would say as a coach, he handled this so well. I mean, it was almost like the way he spoke. It's almost like he transitioned towards something had yeah, no, no excuses right. no reasons to complain and just said hey look it's, it is what it is he didn't have any excuses whatsoever no Vic I don't really even think that they're gonna remember the stuff at the end yeah that's not that memorable what they will remember is that you got beat by 36 points always in the final game of a sweep yeah right that's the part everybody we talk about now the, the, then they'll say oh they were so they got a little dirty at the end but since that happens now the, I don't think that'll be the topic of conversation. It really would. So they talk about whether or not it messed with his legacy. It didn't mess with his legacy. It sure did. At all. And that's not what people are going to remember. They are no. going to remember yeah. swept, swept 36 points. Yes. 
That All they'll day. say those two together. It's like the Boston Celtics Magic Johnson when they got hit. What was it? Yeah. Memorial Day, Labor Day, whatever. Where they lost by thirty five forty. They remember it. They still came back to win the championship. But they everybody remembers that game. I agree with you. They're going to remember this game. Now getting to what I call which players from the Lakers do you feel will come back to the team? Considering a couple of conditions: lockout looming. Contract players who have heavy contracts, which means they have to trade. Which players do you see highest potential not to return? And, and we could go down the list. It doesn't matter. We're just trying to guess because we don't have the inside look on this. You got Kobe Bryant, which personally I feel he's going to be there. Now, Mario, if you had to pick the first one, first catch you say is gone. Higher percentage of not returning. Who would it be? Well, I got to preface this. Because I think everything has to do with the coaching philosophy. That's the reason I have to preface this. Because right. this is a discussion I got into with some people during the game. Because I also reminded them, because all the Laker fans, as much as they say I hate the Laker fans, the most doom and gloom, bitching, crying, falling on the floor people mm-hmm. were the Laker fans. And I, right. and, I, and I told them, I said, you realize that you can make no changes to this team and be in the playoffs next year? That's true. You can make it a good point. You can make no changes right. whatsoever, right. absolutely nothing, right. and you would be in the playoffs next year. Yep. And I said, the other thing I would tell you is two Laker fans who are all upset, even with no changes and a different coach with a different philosophy, not that we don't give awesome respect to Phil, right. but just a new change, a change going to fresh, a different – Fresh fresh, fresh face. Yeah, right, fresh face now. Again, the, the exact same team right. with a different coach still strong in the playoffs again. I know. So, so, so all Laker fans, stop bitching for a moment. <laughs> you still got a playoff caliber team. Right, right. Okay, right. so you just stop it. it. Right. Okay, now, having said that, to me, the whole thing has to do with how much you want to disrupt your team for the chance of getting Dwight Howard. And that's what they're talking. And I don't know. And I don't know. You know, I really don't know because you'd have to give a, a lot. And I think if, if to me that the Lakers should be approached with a scalpel and not a sledgehammer. Right. Once again, like you can overdo all this dismantling. It's right. just not necessary. You have a playoff team right now. But having said all that, I think the people who are likely not to be back next year. Okay, to tell you the truth, because I don't think Paul Gasol is necessarily in there. You could people argue about that, but I go like when you look at the whole season and the day in day out, you still get a certain amount of games by him. That's extended a good amount of games at a certain quality caliber of play. So you may, but see, it all has to do with what you have to do to get uh, Dwight Howard if that's who they want. Right. Uh, and and even though I I thought that tell I thought that uh, um, even better they they have a better chance maybe of getting uh, my man from Dallas. Uh, I'm gonna go with. We're talking with Chris Paul from the Hornets. No, no, no I'm talking about uh, the center, um, Tyson. Um, yeah, Tyson Chandler. I said right. he would be a good fit right. for the Lakers too. But Vic, now I think that only person I can say for sure is probably Derek Fisher. Probably won't be back. Okay. Uh, I don't think Luke Walton. Well, he may or may not be back. He's on the bench. Derek, but you know, uh, I don't know about Paul Gasol. I, like I said, I think that they should, for one not make major changes till they get this new coach in. Right. And then see what the coach wants. That's why the only reason that hesitant because everything has to do with that. I agree that you could talk about trying to get a point guard, but again it depends on the style of ball they play. Well here's the point here, here.